We greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I was going to, to stand up in reverence to reading the word of the Lord. We're going to read Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. We're going to read a couple of verses. No Testament, Ezekiel 37, chapter 37. We didn't understand. Can you pick up for it, please? No, I think he needs a glass of water. Ezekiel 37. It says the following. First verse. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and sat me down in the midst of the valley and it was filled with of bones, full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry and he said to me son of man can these bones live so i answered oh lord god you know again he said to me prophesy to these bones and say to them O oh, dry bones hear the word of the lord thus says the lord so then verse 7 so i prophesied as i was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a uh, rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, prophesy to the Bre the, to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on this slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and soon upon their uh, stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole, uh, the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. In another translation it says, You have been exterminated. Lord God, we Thank you for the fellowship that we have with you. And we ask that your, you may bless your, your people with your word and also the visitors who are here in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The Lord, he says, and those bones that were exposed and an open sky and in a valley that they could, even no one could come and observe the situation that was the house of Israel Israel And who is the house of Israel? The house of Israel is the people of God. And so those bones, they represented the house of Israel. They represented the people of God. And they were all dead. And they have been dead for a long time. That's why the bones were exceedingly dry and why did they die because the people of God because the house of Israel had been divided and a divided kingdom cannot survive says, thus says the Lord 
At that time, there were two kingdoms, Judah and Israel. One was being uh, controlled by Syria, Syrian Empire, and the other was being controlled by the Babylonian Empire. And why did it happen? With the house of Israel, with the people of God. Because they had gone astray from the path of the Lord. Because they had turned to other idols. And they were involved with idolatry, with perverse thoughts, with things that did, didn't please the Lord, that didn't glorify the Lord. And there was a rupture, there was a division. And even the people began to realize that this situation was not good for them. The people said, our bones dried up, the hope has perished, and we are cut down, we have been exterminated. And many times, people, the people think like that, I sinned. I went astray from the project, from the path. I no longer praise the Lord because the people didn't praise the Lord. Because the dead cannot praise the Lord. And the Lord was saying that everybody was dead. The dead do not praise the Lord. It is written in the Word. And it says, we who are alive praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that was the situation in Israel. It was the situation of the people of God without any hope. Is there is no hope. What is it lacking in this house? Christ. Because the Bible says that Christ in us is the hope of uh, glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord, so that there was no Christ. There was no hope in the house of the Lord. It's the people of God. They have been exposed their situation. We have been cut down. There is no solution for me. There is no solution for my household. There is no solution to, to my son. There is no hope for my wife. There is no hope for my husband or my grandson. There is no solution. We, are, um, we had already given up. We are going to die. And the Bible says you should not take the shape of this world. Uh, the people of Israel was not in, in conformity with the Lord. They were in conformity with the world. That was the situation. There's a verse in the Word that says, Why does man complain? Have you, written, have you written that? They all complain about their own sins. That That's why they were complaining. Their hope had, had perished. They lost their hope. And now we have all been lost. But the Lord, He calls Ezekiel. And why did the Lord call Ezekiel? You know why, my brother? Because, because Ezekiel was alive. And even more, Ezekiel walked in spirit. And that's how it was written. He came upon me, the hand of the Lord, and took me in spirit. The Lord took Ezekiel to walk on the valley. God didn't leave Ezekiel in the valley. He didn't leave him there. God does not leave man in the valley. But he brought him to the valley. And tonight the Lord wants to do this with us. He wants to bring us to the valley. The valley of the dry bones. Uh, this is many times is a picture of our spiritual life and our homes, our relationship with our family members. Whoever has gone to a cemetery or a place where there are only bones, we don't hear any noise. It's a complete silence. 
And many times the house of Israel, the house of the people of God, they are in a complete silence. A father doesn't speak with son, grandchildren doesn't speak with grandfather, grandfather doesn't speak with grandchild, the wife doesn't speak with the husband, the husband doesn't speak with the wife. It's a complete silence. But the Lord said the following, look, Israel, people of God, Ezekiel, come with me. And the Bible says, my brethren, that Ezekiel, he was taken to a place. He was conducted to that place. He was uh, led to that place. Was God was with him. And God wants to do this with us. He wants to lead us. He wants to guide us. He wants to be beside us. Because Emmanuel means God with us. God with us. This is one of the names of Jesus. He was not alone. Many times, my brother and sister, you who entered here tonight in the house of the Lord, you need to know you're not alone. My house is in a, a complete mess. My life is like this. Only death, only disaster, only bad things, only destruction. The more I pray, more ghosts come up. <laughs> and that's what is going to happen. The more we pray, more ghosts appear. Because the, the Lord's prayer is not a repetition, it's a teaching from God to men. May your will be done. And that's how it starts. In Brazil, you, we usually say that right likes to write in the right way in tortuous lines. I heard, yeah, this is a saying in Brazil, but God does not write correctly in, with tortuous lines. The right, Bible is, is right that the tortuous things will make them straight. God first, he uh, straightened things up and then he writes. So my brethren, it was there, Ezekiel walking in a valley of dry bones. But Ezekiel was really relaxed. And Psalm 23, he says, even if I walked in the valley of the shadow of death, I would not be afraid because you are with me. And who was with Ezekiel? The Lord was with Ezekiel. Ezekiel was with the Lord. When we are walking, or when you are walking, you are walk on the path. If I walk on the path, when we walk on the path, the Lord is present. Because uh, we'll two walk together if they are not in agreement. When I'm outside of the path, the Lord is not present. But when I'm on the path, He is with me. I'm, then I'm saying that I'm in agreement with Him. So then He is with me on the path. There was a moment of pain, affliction, and suffering because you saw that he saw that sin, a difficulty, that terrible mess, that disorder. Then God came to Ezekiel. And said the following. Could those bones become alive? Many times we, God asked Ezekiel, and maybe you, brother and sister, may ask the, to the deacon or to the pastor or to the brother or sister, hey, my brother, do you think that there is a solution to this problem? Look at the situation. Job, he is, was an expert in suffering. He says the following. If a man dies, will he go back to life? Nobody gave any answer to, J to Job. Nobody answered. 
no one could have answered this question. And maybe you're asking yourself, if I die today, if I go to the cemetery, will I go back to life? How is that possible? If man dies, will he go back to life? But there was, there was one who answered in John. When Jesus was going to resurrect Lazarus, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he's dead, will live again. And if you believe in you are alive, and he, has, he says also, this extra bonus, if you, if you believe and you are alive, you never die. So that's the promise of God, as the word. And the word, we know that the word of the Lord will be fulfilled. So the man asked, uh, uh, man, is there a solution for this? So Ezekiel answered, Lord, Lord God, you know, only God knows. I don't have an answer. My bread here also don't have uh, an answer. You know, and us, he, uh, sometimes people come to me and I uh, remain silent because they, I don't have an answer. But So then seek the Lord because he has all the answer that you might ever need for your life. So the Lord said the following. Ezekiel. Prophesy upon this, those bones. And my brethren, I'm going to say something about the dead. Dead is, doesn't feel cold or hot. You can leave them standing, laying down on one side or the other. You can talk to them forever and there will be no solution because why? Because they're dead. Sometimes we have what a situation, complicated situation at home, a son that is spiritually dead, a, a husband, a wife, something I said before, and you talk, 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 and the guy is like that, the same way. It's completely still. He doesn't do anything because dead doesn't listen to people. You don't need to seek me because I'm not going to give you a solution. He's dead. He's dead. Martha and Mary, they were wise. When the situation got difficult for in, in the life of Lazarus, then they went there to seek Jesus. So only Jesus can resolve it. It doesn't matter to speak to the four winds. It's, you never resolve the situation. The word of man does not resurrect anyone. No one has the power to resurrect anybody. None of us has the, the means to resolve uh, someone else's problem. We cannot even resolve our own. But God told Ezekiel, I'm going to do something here. You will prophesy. But the prophecy of Ezekiel was according to the word of home, according to the order of God. So then prophesied according to the orders that were given to me. So it is worthless for you to prophesy. If it is not an order from God, it is not going to be fulfilled. Dead will not resurrect. Uh, it's not going to be resurrected. A problem is not going to be resolved. Uh, a marriage is not going to be restored. A son is not going to have life once again. The relationship is over. And it's worthless to try. It, it is dead. And that's what the Lord is showing to Ezekiel. That's the situation, Ezekiel. That's the situation. But the Lord said the following. Prophesy to these bones. And my brethren, bone, they are part of a body. Isn't it true? A bone is part of a body, whether it is of an animal or of a person. In this case, those are war bones of people. So then, those people who are there, they were part of a body. And the bone, what is the purpose of the bone? They serve to make us look like this. They, they are the structure of the body. 
the bone of spiritual life is the Word of God. The basis is there, the structure, the foundation. If you die, you died, but you, the basis, the structure, the seed was there. Maybe the 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 marriage uh, was destroyed, but the basis, the word of the Lord, was there. Maybe the son went astray spiritually and decided to do things that do not please the Lord, but he heard the word of the Lord, and it was there. The structure is there. May everything may be destroyed, but the basis, the structure, was there. And God works on the structure. God works on the foundation. God works on His Word because God's commitment is with His Word. God was going to resurrect that people. Why? Because it was His Word. Because the structure was already there. And God is going to bless you and He's going to bless me. When he looks inside of me, I don't have anything else but I have the structure because the word I was kept. I kept your word. So the word is kept. The Lord has a word. The word of the Lord will be fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass by my words or will never pass. But blessed be the name of the Lord. So the structure was there, my brother. In your house, everything may, may be a mess, but the structure is there. Your your life is not like Coca-Cola, but the structure is there. Your relationship is not good, but the structure is there. When you look and see the bones and then you think, oh, there is a structure. There is a word. My commitment is there. Believe in Jesus and you will be saved. You are in your household. There is structure. Oh, a house is a mess. Uh, no, but the house, but the word of the Lord, God answers to His word. He guarantees His word. I will save, and God saves. But my brethren, it is not okay for you to go to church and then pray and then do everything wrong in your life. There is even a song in Brazil that says this. You may have, uh, you do everything right. You may have a, a shoe horse behind your door and all this superstition. This is, is not a solution. What uh, the solution is the word of God. You need to come to the church and pray and pray to the God, to the Lord, and do the things according to the way that God instructs. May or will be done in heaven and on earth. Everyone knows the Lord's Prayer. So let us follow this this instruction. This is the way. Walk on it. Do not deviate for to the right or the left. So then I can finish the service right now. Everybody understood. So then the Lord said the following. Prophesy to these bones. And when a priest entered to the sanctuary of the Lord and inside the sanctuary in the Holy of Holies, everything was quiet. The other priest, you know what they did? They pulled him by a rope. He had a uh, uh, garment and there were sinnets at the rim of this garment. And when he stopped making noise, they would uh, pull him out. They could not enter because they would die as well. So they put him out. When the sanctuary of God is in silence, it's because there is a dead inside there. What did Jesus say in the New Testament? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And when man understands that he is the temple of the Holy Spirit, there is no silence inside of him. There is praise, adoration, gratitude, faith, love. Well, but if there is silence, you can pull it out because he's dead. But if he's dead, if you believe in Jesus, you turn to have life. And that's what the Lord was saying to Ezekiel at that moment they will resurrect. And the word of the Lord, my brethren, says that 
Ezekiel prophesied according to God had ordered him. So that's how things happen. When it is according to the will of God, may your will be done. According to the will of God, any person, any children, intermediate, adolescent, man or woman, if you open up your mouth, according to the will of God, a miracle will take place. In the Bible, my brethren, says that Ezekiel, he prophesied according to the order of God. And while he was prophesying according to the word of God, something happened. Two things happened. Noise and a movement. There are people that don't like uh, noise and rattling. I have a pastor in my region who was my pastor, thank God. And he would come to the church and took out his glass. We need to do some rattling here. <laughs> The situation is not good. <laughs> Noise and sudden, sudden rattling. That's when, when somebody is used by the Lord to bring a prophecy according to the, water, to the order of God. That prophecy, that order, that word will bring noise and rattling. You understand, my brother? You bring noise and rattling. You cause uh, a discomfort, a great noise. Oh, I don't agree. It's not supposed to be this and it's supposed to be like that. You know that? When the Lord wants to put things in order in our lives, it's a great noise. It begins with us. It begins with us, this noise. Oh, I don't understand. I don't know how it's going to work out. It causes noise and rattling. It causes change. The one who is in Christ is a new creature. Everything that I was in the past, I no longer am. It's a change of life. When the order of God come to you, my brother and sister, it causes in you, in your life, in your home, in your house, a change of life. Cause rattling and noise. Cause an agitation. But I'm going to ask you here. Noise and rattling. Did it resurrect the, the dead? Yes or no? No, it doesn't resurrect the dead. We're going to do here a great noise, a great rattling. And I like it. <laughs> but it doesn't resurrect the dead. But noise and rattling, it does one thing. When it is according to the word of God, you know what it does? And restructures. The word of God causes noise and rattling to restructure, to re-edify, to bring back, to put things in their proper place. Was each bone with in its proper place. You put things in their house in their proper place. You put things in my house in their proper place. In your life, my life, in the proper place. I said that God does not write through tortuous lines. He straightened things out first. And so God was straightening up things. Was a, 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 a straightening up uh, that God was uh, operating. Everything was, the situation was there, was a great mess, was a head in one place, arm in another place. It was a confusion that nobody understands, and sometimes our lives is like, are like this. A great disorder, a great mess. How can God act? God needs to put everything in place. The Bible says that he brought a prophet to the house of the, the potter, and the pot was a little crooked and he said oh this pot is not okay so let us break it up and start anew and that's how it is that's what God wants to do with my life with our life it is not only with the house of Israel it's with us to, with me with everyone here 
with the word of the Lord, we can put everything in the proper place. If you are bitter with someone, you need to forgive because if you don't, you are not going to be forgiven. You need to love your neighbor like yourself. But if you don't love yourself, then it's a problem. You don't want to go to heaven. Let us put everything in order. Or allow God to put everything in its proper place. The prophecy from God is, is to put every bone connected to its proper place. Imagine a body that is completely disorganized. Ever seen people, if you God picked up the, the jumble of bones, man would end up with ten arms, other with three arms, and other with three eyes. Can you imagine a bass or a head on the foot, the head on top here? <laughs> Everybody would run away. It's craziness. My brother, God, our God is not a God, God of confusion. First, the order of God was to put everything in order. Put everything in order in my life, in my household, in my relationships, in my work environment. Put everything in order. The valley was filled with dead. But Ezekiel, was he dead or alive? Was he dead or alive? Alive. The one who was beside Ezekiel, was he dead or alive? God is life and in my life. Jesus in your life and my life. Is he dead or is he alive? He is alive. And the situation, the valley of bone filled with, with the dead. But is God in your life and my life? Is he alive or, or he is not? And so because he lives, I can have it tomorrow. So then the praise group was saying here, because it leaves, I can have it tomorrow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I saw, and the nerves came upon him, and his skin stretched upon them, and there was no spirit on them. And the body was already built. Things were are now in order. The Bible says the word comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. The smallest bones in the body, the hammer, and the little bones inside of your ear. So the restructuring begins from the moment that the person can hear the word of God. Those are the smallest. Sometimes we want well, I'm small, but the ones that are taller, <laughs> sometimes they have a hard time listening. But the smallest bones are the ones who allow us to hear. So in the house of God, in the time of Eli, the, the priest Eli, of Nephinei, the two children of Eli, the Bible says that in those days, the word of God was of great worth, but there was no vision that could be manifested. But before the light of the temple to extinguish, God sought a young man. He was the youngest. He was the smallest of that household. It was called Samuel. And through Samuel, God operated a great deliverance 
through Samuel, God blessed greatly his people, the house of Israel. When Samuel, this little Samuel, went to the house of Jesse, he had eight children. The smallest one was David. He was so insignificant because that when the prophet went to his to his, his house, Jesse didn't call him. He didn't even care about this young man. He's so young, nobody has anything for him. But the Lord spoke to Samuel. He said, you're not going to sit at the table until that young man is present. And when the little David arrived, God said, that's the one. This is the one that will guide my people. And through him, I will bless my people of Israel. My brethren, Ezekiel was the only one alive. Everyone else was dead. Are you alive? So then it is you that God is speaking with. Prophesy according to the order of God in your life, in your household, in your relationship. Because God is going to place everything in order. But God wants to place our own lives in order first. Because first we need to fix ourselves up before we can fix other things. Once you do this, once I do this, one, there is this new restoration, this union, this fellowship, this gathering, the holy gathering, church, the body of Christ, husband and wife, they are not two, they are, uh, they are just one. So everybody uh, to its bone, to his bone, I'm going to <laughs> join my bone to my wife, I'm sorry, uh, my old woman actually, I'm sorry for calling you an old woman, <laughs> now I got a problem. Oh, so we need to put everything in order. My brother, you need to put everything in order in your household with your wife. You, young man, young, young woman, put everything in order. Prophesy according to the order of God. Is it everything out of order? Are you dead? Prophesy according to the order of God. And God, you will unite. God will restore. He will ratify. God will operate. He will act. God will manifest. He will put everything in order. Give a new appearance, but salvation is not only about the appearance. The word was to put everything in order. The prophecy of God is to put everything, our own life, in order. <coughs> Place your life in order. The man went there and told Hezekiah, "Put your your life in order." But the word said that there was no spirit. It's not possible for you to put our household in order. But if you remain dead, I put my house in order, but I remain dead. Why was the bone was no longer bone? Now it has appearance. But why? Why was he dead? Was dead because there was no spirit. If you have the Spirit of God, if you don't have the breath of God, you got, you're dead. Is everything right in your life, in your household, everything is right, but you're dead. The church of Laodicea, I'm rich and I don't lack anything. So then the Lord tells you, you are a miserable poor blind and naked. You have all their organization, but you're dead. If you come to the house of the person, everything looks great. The pillows in their proper place, everything is so pretty, organized. Glory to God. The house is very clean. Glory to God. That's how it's supposed to be. But they are dead. God 
picked up the clay and formed the little uh, statue of man. And from the dirt, uh, we are all dust. If you think that you're something else, we are all dust. Maybe you are dust uh, worse than mine, but we are all, we are all dust. But what did God do with the statue of clay to have life? He blew the breath on the nostrils, and man, man's, was became living soul. If you blow here, it's not going to come to the nostrils of anyone here, yeah, right? So when God he came to that little statue of clay that God had made. He blew all the nostrils. So, in other words, he was close. He was very close to him. He was next to him. My brother and sister, God is beside you. God is with you, my brother and sister. And he wants to blow the spirit on your nostrils so that we may become living souls. And the Lord said, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and said to, to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, come from every part, from every place. And blows, like in Songs of Solomon, blows upon my garden so that I might smell your perfumes. When somebody blows and to the nostril of someone else, you smell the breath of that person. What comes out of the mouth of God? What comes from the interior of God? It's the Spirit of God that gives life to man. John. At the door of Jesus, he says the following. I wrote down here. Come on, John. Help me out. John 3, 8. And the wind blows where he wants. It wants. You hear it, its voice. But you don't know where it comes, where it is going to. That's how... All of those who are born of the Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord. What God wanted to do with the house of, household of Israel, with his own people, was to cause everyone to be born of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. We don't know from what part the Lord is going to send his Spirit, but he's going to send his Spirit so that we may uh, once again have life. Is going to blow into your house, into your house, into your home, into the life of wife and your son and uh, mother-in-law of your uh, mother, your grandfather and your grandson, so that they may have life once again. That's what the Lord was saying to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cause noise. I'm going to make. Uh, I'm going to rattle. But I'm going to place everything in the water in the house of Israel. I'm going to blow my spirit. And everyone will become alive. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because everyone who believes in Jesus, the Son of God, will be saved. Not only you, not only Ezekiel, but all your households, all your house. That's the desire of the Lord for your life in the household of Israel. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is your name.
Glória a Deus. I prophesied according to uh, the word that God gave me, and the Spirit entered into them, and they lived once again and stood up on a large army. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The desire of Jesus is so all of us that came so that you may have life and life in abundance. This is the desire of God, my brother and sister. For the love of God. This is what God wants for your life to a household. We're home. So prophesy according to the order God has given you. Prophesy to the Spirit. Like the song that had been sang, Come upon me, Spirit of God. And the Bible says the following, And I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Jesus is the one who baptized with the Holy Spirit. He is present in this place to place your life in order. And to pour out upon each one of us your spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord has shown a woman. She heard lots of bad things about the church. Oh, we are a little bad. You're right. You don't worry about it. That's why I'm here. <laughs> If I was good, I would, I, was not, I would not be here. The Bible says, my brother and sister, the Lord says the following. The, the healthy don't need doctors, only the sick. The pastor preached here about the 99 and the one, right? The sheep and the 99 sheep. He saved the, the one that went astray because the others thought that they were so good they didn't need the Lord. I'm a bad one. I know that I need God. So if they said bad things about the church, they said the truth, right? It is in this place where God transforms bad people into good people. He transforms death into life and gives sight to the blind and raises, put on the feet, the ones that are paralyzed. If you are dead, that's the place where He resurrects as well. This is our God.
Glory to God. The church will stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is your name, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord has shown a woman who is, who is here with us in the house of the Lord. And she went through moments of affliction. And she has exposed what, what is inside, what is in, in her life, and exposed it, put it outside, has placed it outside, thinking that maybe exposing the life that is, is leaving the moment, uh, moment that she is going through it may be bring a little comfort or a solution to her problem but in fact in truth this is causing a greater harm and more insensitive more cold more distant from the lord and the lord tonight brought her to this place she was guided by the holy spirit because god wants to show to her that he has great things to do in her life and in her home. She took the individual there to show the moment in which she was leaving, but showed to Ezekiel that he was not alone. My brother and sister, you are not alone. And God has already given an order on your behalf to a home, to a household, and he's going to resort, restore, and he's going to put you back standing. He's going to blow the spirit. He's going to come from the four, th four winds. Is going to cause your house to be to have life and life in abundance. Amen. Lord, we praise your holy name. We're thankful for this moment that we have in fellowship with you, for your grace and love and favor, and mercy. For the Holy Spirit, Lord, has always guided us every day to walk on the path and has placed our lives in order and has prepared, Lord, to one day for us to enter into your holy seating. Receive the service and adoration that we offer to you in the holy name of Jesus. In the name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our service is over. You can sit down. If you, my brother and sister, you desire prayer, a clarification of the word, or the gifts, spiritual gifts. The brothers are here to give you the proper assistance. We have service on on Tuesday, eight o'clock, a doctrinal service. Thursday, uh, eight o'clock, a, a prayer service. Saturday, at seven thirty. Uh, Sunday night, uh, seven thirty, another service, a glorification of the Lord. And Sunday schools, ten thirty. Everyone can participate. And. 20, March 24, we're going to have a seminar for children, intermediary, and adolescents. And your guests, you, father and mother, you can come, bring your children, your relatives, your, your parents, prophesy to their lives according to the word of God, evangelize, guide them to this place because God has a blessing of salvation, of restoration, of peace, consolation, refreshing, and relief. Of salvation for each person, for everyone. If you need a prayer, just you need just need to raise your hand.